Okay. 
Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. Praise Jesus. Well, I'm excited about a new series we started. Amen. Praise God, the Lord, my healer. I'm so excited about it. The Lord, what? My healer. Say with me, the Lord, my healer. And Pastor Israel took the first, first one. Praise God. Amen. Then Sunday, we had the honor of having my pastor in church. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and then today, um, we pick it up from there, from where we started, um, where we started, the Lord, my healer. Glory to Jesus. I wrote something, you know, online, and I think uh, it's good I mentioned it. There are two areas you must consistently visit from time to time. There are two areas where you must consistently, hear me very clearly, visit from time to time. You have to visit these areas from time to time as a person. Number one is your financial provision, supernatural provision. That's the first area you must consistently visit. Glory to God. And then number two is your divine health, divine health. These two areas are not areas that are negotiable for you as God's son, as a child of God. Hallelujah. You have to consistently, notice the word consistently, visit these two areas every now and then. Um, the thing about Christianity is this, um, um, or the things of the spirit, let me say this way, the things of the spirit are slippery. Amen. They are slippery. The Bible said so that some things will not slip away, okay, from your hand. The spiritual things are very slippery. They are very slippery, okay? And if you are not careful, there are truths that you once knew. There are things you once believed, okay, that if you are not careful, what would happen to you is that you, those things will still be in your head, but they will no longer be in your heart. Because it's been long, okay, that you actually visited, you know, those things. So it's important for you as a child of God. So the things that you once knew, the things, you know, people go like, oh, you know, oh, you know, sometimes people are in church or in a meeting and somebody's quoting a scripture. You go like, oh, I know that scripture, you know, and everything like that. I used to, you know, um, quote it then. You might, you might still be quoting it then, but the question is, uh, the life in that scripture, is it, very, is, it, is it still very present? Okay? Spiritual things can slip away. All right, see Hebrews 2, 1. I want you to see it. All right, let's read it together. What does he say? He says what? I want all of us to read together. What does he say? Since all this is true, uh -huh, we ought, everybody say that we ought. Now you see the word ought there is a word that has to do with intentionality. You ought. It can be done for you. If the Bible says you ought to, you have to pay attention to that. Nobody can do that for you. You ought, okay, to pay much closer attention than ever to the truth we have heard. I want you to pay attention. When you are reading God's word, don't read in a hurry. Always read because, I mean, you, you are not competing with anybody. I always say it as a church, we are not competing with anybody, okay? So I'm not there trying to rush something to finish, okay? What I mean by that, you know, when you are, when you are in, in, in schools, let me explain. Then they go like, oh, you know, jump is about, or oh, Waek is closed. Have you covered the syllabus before Waek? All right, and then so because of that, all schools are rushing, and so sometimes you can almost try to rush some things. But there is no, I don't want to rush some things. It's more important to me that you understand than that you know. Understanding is more important to me, okay? So look at what he says here. He says, What? Well, um, since all this is true, we ought to pay much closer attention than ever. To the truth that we have heard. You've heard some things, okay? He says, lest in any way we drift past them and what? They sleep away. And then they sleep away. We've heard it. We used to believe it. We knew it. And, all that. and let me say this to you. You never walk away from a truth until it sleeps away. I remember how people say things like, you know, oh, you know, sometimes when you go out to preach and evangelize and you're talking to people, I don't know if this ever happens to you, and then you, you meet somebody and you're trying to preach the gospel to them. So the person says things like, uh, forget it. I used, to, I, I used to be in the choir. I have served God before. Forget all, forget all those things and all that. Now, they are saying those things in order to discourage you from doing what you are doing. 
Well, if you are falling, don't try to drag me to the ground with yourself. It means somebody getting what I'm trying to say. At least if you are falling, don't try to drag me to the ground with yourself. So they say things like, forget it. We served God before. We were in the choir. And I was a, I was a deacon. I was a deacon. Forget all those things. So I can tell you, forget it. And because of that, those of those people who are not strong, you know, you believe those kind of things and you begin to play and drop the things that you believe. What is happening is that they are slipping away from you. That is why. There has, I mean, I've been in this, I've been in Christian race for several years now. I mean, going to 20 something, you know, 24, 25 years now. But all manner of wins have come. People have attacked some things in the body of Christ. There was a time people attacked communion. There was a time people attacked titan. There was a time people attacked offering. There was a time they attacked, you know, physical, whatever. Those things have never moved me. I've been standing since. Those wind, and those wind came and blew some people that I knew. They blew some friends away. But it just came like, it was like a breeze to me, not a wind. Because it just went because, you see, I'm firmly rooted in understanding of the things that I know. So there are things you must consistently revisit. Nobody has been able to offend me away from service. Nobody. I've been, I've been, I've, I've, let me say, I've sought several opportunities to be offended. Notice the word opportunity. People will come, I mean, when I, I remember when I was on campus, things people said, and they, it doesn't matter to me. So usually I'm confused when someone says, where, where is Mr. So and so? They say he's not in church. Say, what happened eh, for two weeks now? They're trying to follow him up. Why? He said somebody did something to him in the unit, and I'm like, did that person die for you? I don't understand. Was that person, was the person who saved you? Was that the person who shed his blood for you? Was it because of that person you came into Christianity? So, I mean, I, so I remember, you know, those things happened to me, and I can tell, this person doesn't understand. Usually this is where it begins. Since all this is true, notice, we know it is true, all right? We ought to pay much closer attention than ever to the truth. Again, repeating truth here now, that we have heard. Number one is true, it's truth, we've heard it, lest in any way we drift. And the problem with drifting, everybody pay attention, is that drifting is never a sudden event. When you use the word drift, it is never a sudden event. Drifting usually is actually a soft event. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a soft event. Can you come? Stay here. Praise God. Now, let me show you what drifting is. You just be moving slowly when I'm, you know. This is drifting. This is drifting. Can you move very fast to that place? That's not drifting. Usually when you are drifting from the truth, you don't even know sometimes. It's gradual. So when the Bible uses the word drift, be careful when you start questioning some things. And I'm not talking about the fact that you are just, you know, and everything like that. And believe me, before I came into Christianity, I've read, I've read so many crazy books, you know, about, you know, um, against God. God doesn't exist. I know, I've read or whatever. And you know what? Sometimes as a believer, I'm there. The thought of some of those things I read sometimes wants to come back. Those pages of those books and everything like that, questioning the existence of God. I just stand up. I shut it down. Shut up. Through faith, we understand that the words were created by the word of God. Notice, he didn't say true knowledge. He said true faith. So there are things we know by faith. We don't know them by reason. Through faith, we understand. There are understandings that are imparted to you by faith. And then someone comes and says to you, what are you even saying? How does that even make sense? Does that make sense to you? What is Kantabaya Mokova? Sedokobi, Sedovien de Moon. How does that make sense to you? Forget I can waste time. That's rubbish. I know that. And some of you instantly start questioning that. There are things you don't know by your knowledge. You know them by faith. Read, what, everybody read. One, two, three, go. One, go. Just stop there. Through faith, what? But that is against what they teach us in school. Naturally, in school, how do we understand? True explanation, right? Now, when somebody is explaining some things to you in, in, in school, you go like, Yay! stop, 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 stop. Okay, you mean that the equation on this side, we now carry it to this place. Oh, I understand. How did you understand? By explanation. In Christianity, through faith, we... 
I'm born again. Okay. What is the proof? By faith, I understand I'm saved. My name is in the book of life. Now, Jesus is coming back again. I said, Jesus is coming back again. Jesus. Now, did you see him when, when he went the first time? So how are you sure he's coming back again? Let me tell you, neighbor, through faith, we understand. Faith, Say not through explanation. What is the... What is the rationale between laying hands on somebody and them receiving healing? It's, it's just like, you people are just funny. So is your hand parastamol? Someone says, I'm having fever. You don't say, where is she? You don't say, I, I will lay hands on you now, and then the fever, whatever. Please don't put your hand on your, Is your hand, you know, an injection? What is the explanation? How can you take that to science lab to prove it? Through faith, we understand. Mm. Mm. The Holy Ghost is on your inside. Oh, yeah, prove it to me by explanation. Yeah. By faith. <laughs> by faith. He lives in me. Ooh. He lives in me. He that prays in an unknown tongue does what? Prove it. No, explain it. Prove it. What is the equality of Zibrondo Kobaka Baliba Takarabaraba? They shake it. I say, what happened for the next last two hours? I just edified myself. On what law of physics, chemistry, or whatever? Let's even leave old level physics. Let's go, in, let's go into high level physics. Let's go into, you know, whatever. There is no way you can prove those things naturally. Through faith, we understand. Everybody, come back. I mean, I mean, I, mean, I, want, I said, Prince come back. Let's go back to drift slightly. Move. Since all this is true, we ought to pay much closer what? Attention than ever to the truth that we have heard. Hallelujah. When a man is drifting away, many times, when is a drift? You don't know when you have shifted. It was my birthday some years back, and then one of my friends, you know, was, I think I've mentioned he was celebrating me, you know, he's, still a, he's a friend, he's a dentist, you know, and I was saying something, he said, you know, sincere truth, you know, PM, there are many things I can say, he said, but you're one of the most consistent folks I know. There can be consistency unless you have, you are rooted in something, and your rooting is in what you understand by faith. So two areas, God bless you there. Two areas we must pay attention to. Number one area we must pay attention to is our finances. Pay attention, listen to me, to your finances. Number two, pay attention to your health. These are two areas the enemy can limit your life and limit your vision. I'm telling you. It does not matter the size of the vision on your inside. Huh? If there is no money. I might explain vision in alone you. No, I, 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 see, <laughs> see, see, I'm, I'm telling you, I know what I saw. I, I'm, I say I know what I saw. God showed me. After a while, your wife said, don't let God show you. Let, let us see it. Let us see it, my love. Eh, honey, let's, show me, show me, show me. You say, no, I explain. I explain. Let me tell your neighbor, provision. <laughs> tell somebody, tell them provision. Tell them pro. Tell them V. Tell them pro. From the word for. And then vision. Because provision, the word pro means for. Then vision. So when you say provision, I say for vision. Yeah, that's simply what it is. Pro. <laughs> don't leave me, don't leave me. Yeah, the word, yeah, it simply means pro, for vision. So it simply means when somebody is not having provision, their vision is small. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now, this is not even Bible revelation, it's just English now. Yeah. When you hear pro, what does it mean? For. When I say I'm pro um, Jonathan, what does it mean? I'm for Jonathan. 
When I'm say I am pro um, uh, atiku, what does <laughs> what does it mean? I'm, I'm pro body. When you say I'm pro whatever, that means I'm for. So when you say pro, then when you say vision, provision simply means for vision. So if somebody has vision and there is no proof for it, hey, hey. explanation over to you. He will just be explaining. And when people are explaining too much, you can tell something is not right. I want to tell you, say, sir, don't tell us. What? Wait, let me explain. Let me explain. Somebody said something. Very, he said, haven't you noticed that say, very rich people don't talk too much. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> somebody was with someone, and then he, he had the privilege to meet somebody very important. And then they were sitting down, and then he was talking, and he was explaining, you know, the whole whatever. And he just noticed that the, the rich man was pressing his phone throughout. After the man says, what, how much do you want? Because I'm bored with this explanation. Because for some of you, you, know, you feel like if I can explain well to him, that the capital of one million he will give me, the guy has maybe 10 billion. You don't understand? It's like when you have, let me tell you how one million is to some people at some level. Uh, you know, it's like if or, or just you having just 500,000, really? And somebody comes and is standing in front of you and they are explaining for two hours. After the nothing, you say, how much? I say, I want two naira. You won't go like, please, don't, don't, don't explain. Just take the two naira, leave. Now, that's just 500,000. Because two naira is nothing. How that is to you, scale it up to somebody who is operating at a certain level. Then you are now there wasting his time. You'll be rich. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What Christ has finished for you, true spiritual conclusion, we find physical manifestation in. Because spiritually, these things have been done. But as you engage in some things, it will begin to show. These two areas, I'm telling you, are the areas the enemy can limit you. Number two is your health. If the enemy can keep you bound with disease, it does not matter the power of your vision. Right amount of sickness, and a man is incapacitated. I'm telling you, every vision stops where, the, where sickness stops the person. I'm telling you. And that is why you must make sure you fight for these two areas, provision and your health. Every vision, I've been alive long enough to know that powerful visions were stopped to some degree, at least by the pioneers of those visions, because sickness and disease came in. And you must fight. Let me tell somebody, fight. Tell somebody, fight. Say, fight for your provisions. Say, fight for your health. Say, say Allah, say Allah. Say, fight for your provisions. Say, fight for your health. Glory to God. Yeah. So when I say the vision stops, sometimes some vision, quote and unquote, continues, but the visionary is not able to partake in that thing again. He had to go. And if he has built some good systems, some other people might continue it, but he himself is no longer a part of that thing. Two areas. That the enemy will limit your destiny, provision, and health. And thank God for medicine, because some of us, the reason why we, are, we despise this kind of teaching is because we feel like there is medical sciences. And thank God for medical sciences. And I'm so grateful for them. Medical sciences, they've been wonderful over the ages. They are people of value that we ought to pay attention to. Let me show you this scripture. It will help you. Job 13, 3 to 4. Job 13, 3 to 4. Job, sorry, Job 13, yeah, 3 to 4. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read together. What does it say? Uh-huh. Continue. 
Ajá. Now, I want you to pay attention. This is an insult here. He was angry and insulting people here. And then he said, you are physicians of no value. What does it mean, if you, if you have to say it correctly? It means physicians naturally are people of value. It's just that you people are misbehaving. So because of that, you have become physicians of no value. But naturally, physicians, uh, they have their value. You, so for the Bible to use it in an abusive way here, that you are physicians of no value, naturally, pay attention, physicians have their value. So I'm not here to, you know, when we teach about this kind of things, it's not to play down on whatever, anything on the side of life. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? That is not consulting the enemy or the demons, but it's on the side of life. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hallelujah. It's on the side of God, maybe at a, at a lower level. So medicine was actually God helping or tapping into the wisdom of man to provide some things for people. So there's nothing wrong with it. So physicians naturally, look at it, are value. He says here, you are physicians of no value because he was angry with how they were behaving. So naturally, it should be, if, okay, if you read, I always tell you to read the scriptures backward, right? So, but ye are forgers of lies. Let's remove it now. So ye are believers of truth. Uh -huh. Ye are physicians of, so naturally, physicians ought to have value. Oh, glory to God. Amen. But there, there, there is more. Let me show you something about somebody here. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 16. In this month, there are a lot of questions in your heart to be answered. Hallelujah. About healing, about drugs, about some things. Okay. Let's go to 2, Corinthians, 2 Chronicles 16, 11. 2 Chronicles 16, 11. In 2 Chronicles 16, 11, let's read together. What does it say? It says, surely I will speak to the Almighty. Hallelujah. No, that's not it. I was wondering. 2 Chronicles 16, 11. Okay. What does it say? It says what? Eh. Ah. Who is in charge of this thing? Uh, Solomon Bao. Okay. So let's read together. What does it say? And behold, the act of Asa. Uh -huh. First and last. Lo. They are written in the book of the king of Judah and Israel. Let's continue. And Asa in the 39th year of his reign, what happened to him? That means he had a disease. You know, let me say it, 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 would, have, it would have been an infection. Maybe. All right. You know, maybe. All right. Maybe he had an infection in his feet. Okay. So the Bible says he was diseased. He had an infection in his feet, or I don't know what other disease doctors will know, you know, can happen to the leg. But the most common for me would have been, I want you to pay attention, because like I always say to you, the teaching church is what? The hope of the body of Christ. So teaching is important. I want to establish for you, you know, something very important, not just rushing. All right, it says, as I, 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 it was disease in his feet. Let's continue. Until his disease was exceedingly great. And now when I was studying this, this touched me. If you pay attention to the disease of Asa, it was a disease that had graduation. The first thing he says is, I see, as in whatever, Asa was whatever until his disease, you know, uh, was diseased in his feet. Uh -huh. Until his disease was exceedingly great. He was graduating. He was first a small infection. Ah, hello, sir. Hello, sir. Your Highness. Okay, good morning, sir. I noticed you limped yesterday when you were about to sit on the throne. He said, no, it's just something small on my leg. Your Highness, okay, sir. And then you, he goes on and then he lies down. And his wife says, ah, Your Highness, I noticed that since you woke up, you've been limping. Hope everything is saying, oh, there's nothing. Look at that. Oh, he was diseased in his feet. Until his disease was exceedingly great. He didn't start big. Be careful of small things that come. And I know this is for, listen, some of you don't fight early. The time you want to start fighting, the disease has become exceedingly great. 
Some of you don't fight early. Neboko hi brande kasi atamaya. Mge nukoba hi delidia. From the time that thing starts showing up. The disease of Asa did not come to him great. He was just a small cough. <coughs> Your Highness, <laughs> sorry, give me water. Then three hours after, <coughs> double. Then give me water. Then three hours after, four weeks after, <coughs> then ten months after, <coughs> then one year after. <coughs> He didn't start. Every great disease starts with a disease. Listen to me very carefully. Don't look at sickness. Sickness is not your friend. The enemy brought it to stop you. To reduce your pace and to hinder the fulfillment of your destiny. Stop saying when people die that God took them home. It's not everyone that went home by the taking. The enemy terminated their life. For the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. There are times people died, God was not involved. But we, in order to encourage people, when somebody around them dies, we say things like, God wanted an angel. So when human beings die, they become angel. How does, does that even make sense to you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, no, that's not faith at all. That's, that's nonsense explanation. You know why? I will explain to you. Let me, let, let me explain to you. Listen. Look at it. This is the point. When we are on earth, are saved. The Bible says angels are what? Ministering spirit. They are servant to you when you're on earth. You will not die to become them. I, I don't know if it makes any sense. It, it's, it, it's some, when you are on earth by salvation, that person is a ministering spirit to you. So God will now say, I, I want to turn you to, to a ministering spirit when you die. So God has, God has collected an angel. So they are now in heaven. They have become an angel. They are not. Don't let us encourage people with things that are not biblically correct. Don't encourage people with that one. It's against the scriptures. Don't say things that are anti-scriptures to make somebody feel okay. It is not every time people die that God called them home. Sometimes the enemy attacked their life and took them before their time. Took them before their time. Not every time. People have died and Satan was involved. The enemy was involved. Esau started his life. So his battle with sickness, he started small. But Esau, you know, just like many of you, he's just like in Koke Kirini. Denier is not fighting. Some of you are in denier and you think you're fighting. In Koke Kirini, something is growing on your body already. And you are allowing it. Every day you go in front of the mirror to check it, what's the new sizes. You just remove your clothes. Ah, I think it's bigger now. And then two days after, oh, I know that. Then you'll not be rubbing it with Vaseline. Or with a rub. Or with a bony king. And then the enemy says, that's exactly what I want you to be doing. Tell your neighbor, don't allow that cough. Tell, tell them, tell them, don't allow that cough to become great cough. Tell them, don't allow that pain to become great pain. Now tell them, tell them, don't allow that headache to become great headache. Tell them, don't allow that limping to become great limping. Asa was diseased in his feet. That was just what it was. It was simple. And Asa, in the 39th year of his reign, was diseased in his feet until his disease was exceeding. Notice the word, until. Guess what? In all the until, we didn't hear anything about Asa doing anything about it. Until. But I want you to continue what happened. 
Yet, is this, yet in his disease, he sought not the Lord. When he became whatever, he didn't seek the Lord. Many of you make God as your last option. <laughs> because Esa is a whatever. God is your last resort. Yet in his disease, he did not seek the Lord. In his disease, he sought only physicians. He must have thought that as the king of Israel, there is no money that will be required. I can't you know. Tell them, even if they have what is called experimental drugs, for this feat, I will pay for it. If they have nanotechnologies, I'm the king. Tell them, if they have to create the new drug, I will pay for it. He sought the physicians. He did not seek the law. Yet, I want you to pay attention. Read very, until his disease was exceeding great. Yet, in his disease, he did not seek God. Have you prayed about the headache? I've told you before, when we're doing, you know, um, rivers and wells, on the prayer of supplication, you have to go back and listen to that message. You have to hear it again. Have you prayed about this headache? Have you prayed about these things till it becomes a time when you look at that thing that's caught up with you? Don't have a late response. I want to say to you, when it comes to sickness and disease, there is a time that is best you respond around that time. If you don't respond, whatever, usually your faith will have been greatly affected because the symptoms will have been too loud for you to even confess anything or say anything. I'm having this pain, you know, in my whatever, in my leg. I'm having this pain on, on my spine. I'm having this pain. I'm having this pain. And that's why I've told you over time, never despise a miracle. Hey, hey, don't you despise miracles. You may not need it today. You stay alive long enough. Everybody will need a miracle. All of us. Your miracles might not be in healing. It might be whatever, but every, for some of you, it could be a miracle for pro, for your vision. But all of us, we need a miracle someday. Every believer, we want to need a miracle. Asa did not see God. For some of you, it's after you have used every drug. The Bible says in his disease, he sought not the Lord. But after you have used any drug, they now say, I see where it is now. Drug cannot work. You now start looking for God. Seek God early. I say, seek God early. Let me tell somebody, stop limping. Deal with their limping before it becomes a great disease. But he did not seek the Lord, but to physicians. There's something I also wanted to say, everybody. Why is it that he, he said he did not seek the Lord, but to physicians? There's something about that scripture that you ought to pay attention to. Why are those two people put in the same sickness and in the same sentence where disease is concerned? Have you asked yourself, they are talking about disease. Two people were mentioned there. The physicians and God. Why? Because what the physicians can do, there is somebody that can do much more. Why did he talk about the physicians and God where they are talking about disease of the leg? Okay. Let me say this now. Let me say, let me say, uh, So, um, a Mercedes was parked in the garage, and a Toyota was parked in the garage, and Tammy was also parked. Does that even make any sense? What is Tammy doing in the conversation about cars? Is he a car? If you ever introduce Tammy into that conversation, is it that there is a car called Tammy? Or it's an anomaly, he's not supposed to be in that conversation. Is somebody understanding what I'm saying? Huh? Oh, they serve us four, I mean, four square meals, not three. Solid. All right? 
another. First one, you know, was, you know, uh, maybe pepper soup. Second one was, you know, I'm just, you know, maybe uh, fried rice. Third one, you know, was maybe fruit. Third one was, you know, you know maybe whatever. And then the answer, I see. And then they said to me. Does that, what is it doing in that conversation? It's not, so when you say that somebody was diseased and you mentioned physicians, what is God doing in that conversation? Is either God is a healer or it is an anomaly. For God to be introduced in that conversation, it shows you something. That his assignment or his power has capacity to do greater than what the physicians can do. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter how long that thing has been in your body. The mercy of God is rising up for you in the name of Jesus. Tell somebody, seek the Lord. Hey, tell them, hey, sir. Hey, ma. You know, as in do it like, hey, Yoruba people, you know, the way, you know, hey, sir. Hey, ma. Tell them, seek the Lord. Tell them, seek the Lord early. Tell them, God is not the last resort. Tell them, please, he's the first resort. Tell them, before you go to hospital, pray about it. Tell them, are you getting what I'm saying? Uh, mm, glory to God. I said, glory to God. Amen. Is this simple enough? See, I don't permit sickness here. I just noticed every time I climb staircase, my heart begins to do big, 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 so fast. I don't even know what is happening. I know that. But I just, I, but I found a way to deal with it. The immediately I get to the end, the two to the last staircase, this last two, two to the last step, I should just rest with one leg up, one leg down. If I do like this for five minutes, I'll be fine. <laughs> Satan says, pose here, gonna me like. <laughs> I like that pose. Don't fight me, oh. Be posing at the three to the last step. Don't fight, don't fight me. That palpitation you're having, I don't want you to fight me. Just be posing. Because some of you have learned how to deal with deal and manage diseases. I have this pain in my body and all that. The only thing that when I sleep, I know how there is a position I sleep that will no longer pain me. How? One leg on the wall. Like a witch. <laughs> I'll put one leg, on, one leg on the wall, then the other leg will be under. Then I will use, because Pastor told me I should use pillow to lift up my hip. You know, he's a physiotherapist. So once I lift up my hip like this, and the leg there, and, uh, usually it's a magical can do me more. Satan says, me like posing. I love that pose. He was disease in his feet. Then he became great disease. Why? He sought not the Lord. Because he didn't seek the Lord, he kept increasing. He kept increasing. He kept, when I pee, I have pain. Satan says, I said, but I, I've noticed that. See, if I just keep drinking water, it doesn't go. Satan says, mm -hmm. one more tank like you do. Why? <laughs> you will drink tank. You will drink tank. Don't, oh, oh, oh. I will make sure. <laughs> Let me tell you about fighting. Tell somebody, fight it early. I didn't just say fight it. Fight it where? Early. Fight it what? Early. Let your prayers go up. Be, I'm telling you, be desperate in your prayers. When I mean desperate now, not desperado of people who lack faith. But when I mean like, see, I am having nothing but healing. That's what I mean by desperation. Nothing but what my Lord has done for me. So thank God for doctors, but there are things that are beyond their capabilities and their abilities. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Amen. Because of time, let me move on. I want to speak to you. I want to add some things to it now. Because you cannot have faith in the ability of God to heal you Unless some things. As, now quickly give me Romans chapter 10, verse 13. Romans 10, 13 to 14. Everybody pay attention now. Romans 10, 13 to 14. 
Let's pray in tongues for a few minutes. Let's pray in tongues. Every, no, no, remember I've told you, we are circumcision that worship God in spirit. So I want you to open your mouth wherever you may be. Pray in the spirit. Some of you, you've heard teachings on healing and you are just adding what I'm saying to your archive. No. You can't add it to your archive. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Zakato zozo kepala de saha. Ela basha tatale barabarada saha. Mazatele geraboso to gabagabarada. Enda la mazazatale bakaya ndolo bosha. Now pray in the spirit for a few minutes. Come on now, come on now, come on now. Let's pray in the spirit. Heke bakunda le dea. Makabagabagobo shetele barabadaba. Zozo makali dabaya. Le garadarada saha. As you are saying, in, as you are praying in tongues, be saying, I forbid sickness in my body. Roshatika manosa. Egende bakosunta mayagaya. Hegada, hegada. I'm unstoppable. I have a destiny. I must fulfill my destiny. I must fulfill my, de my destiny. No sickness will stop me. Kelo bodosa. Ayanya bande kabadele dodosa. Is there a disease that you have been managing? Don't manage it again. Marode bakayenda bakaya ha. Zozo male kateza ende kaya. Hey, fight early. Please fight early. Fight early. Fight early. Hola mena keso tola barada sa. Ela barabararo satala barabaraba sa. Enda katala ba. I know it's a small pain, but don't allow it. Don't allow it go beyond that. Esa sought not the Lord. He did not seek God. The Bible said he sought the physicians. Thank God for doctors. They have their values. But in the sight of God is another thing. Let's just, I want us to stay up. To stay up something on our inside. Eleboros yeta barabaros. Stir up, stir up. Let's stir up. Let's stir up. Lord, in the name of Jesus, this disease has no place in my body. This sickness has no place in my body. Ebake namakaya. I refuse and I reject anything that is contrary to well being. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I will not manage sickness. I will not manage disease. I will not endure sickness. I will not endure disease. In the name of Jesus. Ele baro satarara. It's just my grain. It's just my grain. No, no, no. No more. It's normal. Every month. It's just your menstrual pain. No, no, no. No, no. No. I will not endure. Barateke bayaba. This swelling in my body, I will not enjoy. No, no, no. No, no, no. I'm not going to manage it. 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 No, 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 no. No, no. I have a destiny. I have an assignment to fulfill. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Be seated. We will not manage sickness. We are unstoppable. I say we are unstoppable. Oh, yeah, there are people who died at the age of 28. There are people who died at the age of 25. 
not us. And then people begin to say, oh, heaven gain an angel. No, 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 no. We will not give scriptural explanation to nonsense. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? A saint does not become an angel. No, it can never happen. A saint can never become an angel. A saint, I need to say that again so that you stop saying those things. Oh, he, uh, he became an angel. A saint never becomes a, a ministering spirit. He never becomes a ministering spirit. Never. No scriptural explanation for such. Heaven didn't gain an angel. So we're not going to romantic, ro- ro- make it romantic. Death is death. Death is a loss. Forever and ever is an enemy of God. Yeah, that's what the Bible said. The last enemy to be overcome is death. It's forever an enemy. And if it's an enemy, we're not going to play with it. Death is an enemy. Yeah. It's there. 1 Corinthians 15, 26. Let's read together, everybody. I want you to read. Everybody, read. Ah! Is that spiritual death? So for those who are not born again, and physical death, but the truth, no. no. In the beginning, death was not supposed to be. It, it came by the curse. If you shall eat, the day you shall eat of this food, you will surely die. It came as a curse. If you eat, you will die. So when you see it or whatever, it is not something for you to whatever. If you see, and let me say this to you, sickness is actually, you know, like death playing around somebody. Doctors will say to you. Out of every 100 people that died, maybe only about 10% of them just died without anything. But almost everybody that died, there is an explanation. I want to say, ah, he has been sick for a while, or maybe ah, he just collapsed, or there was heart issue, or something happened. Or, I mean, there is all, maybe he was in surgery, but there was always something. Something linked to sickness or disease. Don't joke with it. Don't, make, don't be romantic about it. I live. I don't even like how you're saying it. Well, I, maybe some people can say it better. I live. Say the life of God. Is that work in me? <laughs> say it better, the life of God. He's at work in me. Glory to God. Yeah. The life of God. He's at work in me. Say it again. Say the life of God. He's at work in me. This time I don't believe it. Say the life of God. He's at work in me. This time believe it. Say the life of God. He's at work in me. Say I choose life. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Say better, say I choose life. life. Come on, say better, say I choose life. life. Someone says, eh, you have to choose life. Yes! Yes! I was in an hospital with somebody very dear to me some years back. What a privilege not to see what happened because it was a bad thing that happened, but the privilege to see that people can choose life. Terrible case. The doctors came suddenly, pam, pam, pam. They said, I see you, I see you, I see you. Ambulance came. Everybody was rushing. Brrr. At a major teaching hospital, we carried this dear person inside. You could see I <laughs> struggling to stay alive. But I was close to where the head is. I kept here. <laughs> She couldn't say it out loud, but she kept saying, choose life, choose life. We went to the e- e- um, e- ICU, they pushed everybody out and everything like that. Some days, person was there, but came out living. I choose life. I choose life. 
If she kept quiet and just there saying, hey, aye, a camera, aye, toto. Satan will say, oh, me too. That's the soundtrack that I want for what I want to do right now. Life. Choose life. Oh, glory to Jesus. I choose life. I choose life. I choose life. Someone says, do we have to, I always say to you, even when I'm teaching like this, and I don't quote scriptures for some things, usually I, I'm speaking from a scripture. Because my mind has been mastering it. Let me show you Deuteronomy 30, 19 to 20. Let's go there now. Everybody, I want all of you to read with me. Let's go together. Everybody, wherever you may be, read this scripture. Let us go. What does it say? Hold on. Every time I read this scripture, because this is one of my confessions. This is one of the things I say over myself. You know, I wouldn't say maybe daily, but at least almost every week. Okay? I say this, but this is one of the scriptures I say it over my life. But I don't say it this way. So I don't say I call heaven and earth to record this day against. I say I call heaven and earth to record this day in your favor, in my favor. Okay, so let us now read better now. What does it say? I call heaven and earth to record this day in my favor. Aha. Uh -huh. I have set the my life. I have what? Aha. Uh -huh. Continue. Aha. Uh -huh. Therefore, choose life. You should choose life. Therefore, therefore, what everybody? I uh -huh, that. Continue in the next verse. Uh huh. Uh huh. Continue. He's my life. Oh, glory to God. For he is thy life. I don't think there's any time I get to this place that I don't scream. Because he does, for he is my life. But guess what? Even though he is thy life, what did he say? He said, choose life. He didn't say he's thy life. He will jump on you. No, he is thy life, but choose. I choose life. For he is thy life. He's not just my life. What is it, everybody? He's the length of my days. Is the length of my days. That doctor's report will not come to pass. Amen. For the Lord is your life and is the length of your days. I said that doctor's report will not come to pass. Amen. I said that doctor's report will not come to pass. Amen. For he is thy life and the length of thy days. Ooh. For he is my life and the length of my days. I don't even like how you're saying Come on, say it better. And the length of my day. Come on, one more time. One more time. Say the word of God. He's higher, greater than any report. He is my life and the length of my day. I choose life. Amen. Hey, God of my Yehiba Kayaba. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now go back to Romans 10, 13 now. Romans 10, 13. You know, I love doctrinal teaching a lot. It, 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 it establishes us. It establishes us. Doc, I, I, I love doctrinal teaching. It establishes us because you can see the graduation. You can see it from scriptures. It's building up onto a certain crescendo. Now, let us read this together, everybody. What does it say? Now, let's remove save there. Let's put heels there. And whosoever shall... Oh. Now let's remove heal there. Let's put healthy there. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I want to see the next verse. What is the next verse, everybody? 
Uh -huh. It means, listen, hold on. It means until somebody talks to you. Oh, let's, let's just finish reading so that we can see it again. So I, I, don't, I don't cut it short. I want you to see yourself. I want to go and how, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Uh-huh. How shall they believe in whom? That means you cannot believe if you have not heard about something. Okay, and how? So usually, God sends a preacher to preach to you. When he preaches to you, you begin to hear about a certain dimension. When you hear that certain dimension, then you believe that certain dimension, and then you are saved. So it, there must be a preacher, somebody that is teaching you something. That person teaching you something produces what? Hearing in you. That hearing produces faith in you. That faith producing salvation, health, or healing in you. So why did I say that? That is why this month, the, one of the, that's one of the reasons why it's essential that we teach some things. Because as the preacher is preaching, you are hearing some things. As you are hearing some things, your faith is rising in some things. As your faith is rising in some things, you are receiving your health or your salvation. But it starts with the preacher. A preacher is preaching some. That is why I always say to you, be careful of who preaches to you. Because whoever preaches to you determines what you hear. Because what you hear determines what you believe. Because what you believe determines what you can call on God for. Everything starts with the preacher. Oh, yeah. If somebody tells you sickness is final and you don't, you don't understand, then something is wrong. You are already hearing wrongly. You will believe wrongly. You will receive wrongly. We can choose life. We can choose life. Aha. I say we can choose life. If somebody tells you that, hey, Komata, you don't have to do much. And everything like that, that's what you are hearing. That person that is hearing is affecting your, your, your believing. That believing is affecting what you are receiving. I choose life. Vital things that will help you, that you must hear in order to receive or know some things. Praise God. Number one, you must know his, him as your healer. You must know his name as your healer. This is the first thing you must know. And that was why when I was talking to you about why was God introduced into the same conversation as physicians? Why? Because God is a healer. Let's quick, so number one, the first thing a preacher must show you or the first hearing that you must hear is that God is a healer. Ah, gamma no tolaba. I said he's a healer. Uluwosoni. Uludande. And Olu Jaide. Did you hear that? Not just Olu Dandi, Olu Jaide. Olu Waton Jaide. Olu Woson, Olu Waton Wonison. Oh. Huh. Praise God. Let me tell your neighbor the first thing you must know. You must know him as your healer. Jeremiah 30 17. Jeremiah 30, 17. I want you all to read this. I want you all to read this. Jeremiah 30, 17. Parents, know this. Not just know it for yourself. Know it enough. That if the enemy wants to bring nonsense around your children, you can rise. You can stand as a parent. I said, no, no, not here. Not here. So we don't just know things for ourselves. No. We don't just know. I'm telling you, we don't, don't just know. Look at where we're coming from. Is it Genesis 30 now that you choose life? Guys, can you put it back? Then we'll come back to Jeremiah 30. Let's, let's quickly see. Je, je, um, Deuteronomy 30, sorry. Deuteronomy 30. Hallelujah. I want you to read again, everybody. Want to see something? I want to show you something. Let's read, read, read. Want to go? In my favor. Uh-huh. 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 That what? I and... My children, my seed. Whatever you choose affects what your children receive. That is why when a parent is learning healing, inadvertently his children, his children at a certain age, they are learning healing. That both you and your what? Seed. Both you, okay. And your descendants may live. 
may live. Oh, glory to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now go back now. Let's now go back to Jeremiah 30, 17. I, I hope you are writing all these scriptures down. I hope you are writing all these scriptures down. Now let's read together. What does he say, everybody? What does he say? For, for I will restore. Who is the person? Who is the person? What is he saying now? I will I will restore health unto thee, uh -huh, and I will heal thy... Ooh, who is the person who is doing this? Come, you will soon see now. Everybody, let's go again. Let's start from the first. What does he say? For I will restore health. I don't know who you are. God is restoring health to you now. Put your hand wherever it is that you, you're believing God for healing. Put your hand wherever it is. And I want you to say this scripture over it three times. Go now. Now, you see, listen to me. You might not even be feeling that pain now. You may be okay. But there is a place where consistently, sometimes, a pain comes in that area. So it, as, as you are sitting down here now, the pain might not be there. But you know there is a pain that comes at a time in certain places. I want you to say this scripture over it three times. Want to go, everybody? Let's go. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wound, says the Lord. Aha. Uh -huh. Because call the outcast saying, this is I, whom no man. Let's just read from the beginning again. Want to go? Let's just stop there again. Go again. We're reading only that part. Want to go? Now, let's personalize it right now. For he has restored health unto me, and he has healed my own. Say it again, say it again. One more time, say it again. Come on, say it again, say it again. One more time, say it again. Hallelujah. This is the first thing we know. We must first know him as our healer. He says, say the Lord. Say the Lord. I. So who is the one doing it? The Lord is a healer. The Lord is a restorer of our health. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. I don't even know what's wrong with you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> He looked the more Mary. He's a kid. You know No way. We don't say things like that. Even if it's not, even if the temperature is still there, he will say, "For he has restored her thoughts." We stay with the word. We don't side with the symptoms. Some of you side with the symptoms. For I will restore. Yeah! He said he will restore. I don't even know whether it's true. What are you saying? The word, of God, the word of God is true even if you are not feeling it. Because the word of God is not our feelings. He has restored health unto me. I don't like how you're saying it. He has restored the altar. Say, say with me, say the Lord. Who is the one doing it? Can he do it with you? Is he doing it with you? Come on, then receive it with joy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. 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 I'm not going to die young. Hallelujah. He has restored health unto me. It does not matter how long the enemy has done that work in my body. That work is being undone right now. Because the Lord has restored health. You see that? So number one, you must know him as what? Say with me, there are things you must know. To walk in health and life. Number one, you must know that he is the Lord that 
healeth your healer. Is the Lord your healer? Say, is the Lord your healer? I don't even like how you are saying. Say, the Lord my healer. Exodus 15, 26. Exodus 15, 26. Exodus 15, 26. There's a long script verse, but I love the last part. Hallelujah. Amen. I just want us to read the last part alone, the very last words. One to go, it says what? Because of time, because I have so many things to cover, and I want to start rushing right now. What does he say, everybody? For, for I am the Lord that cursed thee. I am the Lord that afflicted your body. Huh? I am the Lord that you are the Lord that me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word. Don't say my, say D. D, dizzy. Ay, 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 ay. It's not my disease, all right, okay? It's not your disease. Don't take it. Say, you are the Lord. You are the Lord. That he led me. You are the Lord. My healer. Ay, 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 ay. You sent your word and healed the disease. You are. You know, there is such a healing anointing flowing in the service right now. As you are singing, I'm telling you, the healing, sing it again. The healing anointing is already, I can sense it. There is a, dis, there is a descent. Something just descended right now. If you are sensing it, you know the atmosphere just shifted. Sent your love and heal the disease. You are, you are, you are. Again, one more time. Sing with faith. Sing it with faith. You are the Lord. Sent your word and healed the disease. You are the Lord, I He touched me. He touched me. And oh. What joy that fills my soul. Ay, 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 Something happened and unknown. It touched me. He made you whole. He touched me, he touched me, he touched me. He touched me. Ay, 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 time. Sing, 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 sing. He touched me. He touched me. And oh, what joy that fills my I know 
to me something is happening in your body right now yeah the healing anointing is moving in service right now as you are seeing him as your healer the healing anointing is is flowing right now the healing anointing is flowing right now the healing anointing is flowing Ay, ay, ay. to know that the Lord is speaking to you. He says, I am the Lord that healed thee. I am your healer. 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 I am Bakaya Barosa Talavas. I am your healer. The Lord is my 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 healer. Hallelujah. I'm healed. For he has restored health to my body. For he has restored health to my body. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I hear. He has restored health to my body. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I see. He has restored health to my body. I am a Santa Cabare. I'm not moved by what I see. For the Lord my God has restored health. For the Lord my God has restored life. For the Lord my God has restored wholeness to my body. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Be seated tonight. Be seated. Now, before this meeting is over, you will check. You will know that, see, that thing is no longer there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you will check. There is such a move of the Spirit. Hallelujah. So, first of all, you know him by what? His name. You know him as your healer. Number two, you know him, hallelujah, by his act. You first know him by his character or by his noun, by his name. That is the first thing you know him by his noun. You know him by his name. You say, I am the Lord that healed thee. That means I am Rapha, I'm healer. Then you also know him by his act. Say with me, his act. Say, say better, say his act. Now, quickly give me Matthew chapter 12 and verse 15. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 15. Jesus has touched some people here already. 
Matthew 12, 15. Let's read Matthew 12, 15 because of time. What does this say, everybody? But when Jesus knew it, what happened? He withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him. And what happened to him? He, he, how many of them did he heal? How many of them did he heal? Now, you know what is powerful? As I was reading this scripture, the Lord began to say to me, he didn't ask any one of them what they did to get the disease. There was no interview about the disease. Hey, come, you come. How did, you, how did it happen? Have I not been talking to you not to do that again? He healed them all. It does not matter how he came to your body. Today is your healing. He healed them. How many of them? Say with me, there are things we must know. The first thing, say we must know him as our healer. Say number two, we must know him through his act of healing. So the first thing you know him by his name, by his noun. Number two, you know him by his act. Because if somebody stands up here now, listen to me, and say, I am the fastest runner. That you've known me by what I have said. You then must know me now by running. I be now. Praise God. I be now. So I've said that I'm the Lord that healed thee. You say yes. He is now showing you now his healing anointing and his healing power. Let's go to Matthew 18, 16. Matthew 18, 16. Pay attention, don't worry. Leave the ceiling alone. Matthew 18, 16. And then stop thinking of your clothes outside. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I'm just thinking, ah, woman, don't time do me at the close. Cut the cone church. Cut the veggie lal. And some of you are thinking, I say, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That woman with bread, she won't want to stay under the ring. She'll have gone. That's I'm going to buy bread on our way home. The Lord will feel thee. <laughs> Matthew eight sixteen. Let's go, everybody. What does he say? When the what? Matthew 8, 16. Matthew 8, 16. What does he say? Matthew 8, not 18. Matthew 8, 16. What does he say? When evening was come, what happened? They brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he casted out, what? out the spirit with his word. And what happened? And he healed all that were sick. That means even if the disease is caused by a demon, he casted out the demon and then they were healed. So there are sicknesses that are caused by demons. It's called the spirit of infirmity. There is a spirit of infirmity. Listen to me. There are headaches that are not normal. Listen to me. There are pains that are not normal. It is called the spirit of infirmity. And there are times that some things in your body start because you have stressed yourself. So it might start by stress. And then the enemy comes and jumps and holds it. The spirit of infirmity now helps what came normally. So you must know that there is something called the spirit of infirmity. There are times that you are having chest pain, truly because you are hungry. You've not been eating well. You had a bad eating habit. And so you started having chest pain. But there is also something called the spirit of infirmity that will now say, Ah, Mori pain in then the spirit jumps and latches on. That time, you are no longer fine, no matter the amount of food you eat after. Because something else has added itself to it. So the Bible said, look at that. And he casted out the spirit with his word. And when he casted out those spirit, the Bible says he healed those who were sick. There are infirmities that were actually caused by devils. Oh yeah. When Jesus got to the house of Peter and the mother-in-law was sick, she had what? fever and the bible said he commanded it to leave her that means there was a spirit responsible for it and it left her it left it left her there was something at the back of it that jesus spoke to and that thing had to leave because of time what's the first thing we must do when we come to us you know number one huh ah huh? i must know him as what Number two, everybody, by his act of healing. Let's go to Luke chapter 16, verse 19 now. Luke 6, sorry, Luke 6, 19. Luke 6, 19. Luke 6, 19. We're seeing scriptures to show us his act of healing. 
Now, let's read. What does it say, everybody? It says what? And the whole multitude sought to touch him for what? There went virtue out of him. And what happened? You see, another scripture totally now. Saying he healed them all. He didn't leave some people and saying, you, I can't heal you. I can't heal you. I'm, 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 I'm training you. I want to train you with disease. Today is not a day for that. I will deal with that, whatever. But it is against scriptures to believe God is training you with sickness. Now, how many of you want to train your child, your son, with something? Then you will now go and go to the hospital. You say, hey, an HIV virus in a bowl. Then they will say, okay, well, whatever. Then you call your son. They will say, you will drink this thing and we infect you so that you can learn. I want to teach you something. Teach you something. Yeah? Mm. If you will not do that to your biological children, how much more God? God does not need disease to teach us. He has his word to teach us. He has the Holy Ghost to teach us. Don't believe a lie. May you not believe a lie. Sin can open doors to sickness. But you must know that sin opened the door to the enemy, not God trying to shoot, teach you. So it's possible a man is sinning and a sickness comes. It is not God trying to teach him. It's that his sin opened the door to that thing. It's not God. So don't link it to God. Luke 6, 19. Luke 6, 19. Luke 6, 19. Luke 6, 19. What does he say? Last everybody, he says what? And the whole multitude sought to touch. Now, okay, we've, we've taken that, Rabbi. Now, let's read the last one. Luke 9, 11. Luke 9, 11. Luke chapter 9 and verse 11. Luke chapter 9 and verse 11. What does this say, everybody? And the people, when they knew it, what happened? They followed him. What happened? And he received them. Uh-huh. And spake unto them, what? Of the kingdom of God. Uh-huh. What happened? And he healed them. What? That what have need of healing. The Lord spoke to me as I got this. He said, and he healed them that had need of healing. And he said unto me, son, healing is not a want. Healing is a need. Healing is not a want. Healing is a need. Healing is a need. It's a need that God is able to meet. Not... Uh, every, uh, uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, he healed them that wanted healing. No. He healed them that need healing. Healing is a need. It's a need that your father will not overlook. It's a need that God will not let pass by. It's a need. For oh my God shall supply all my all my hallelujah. The Lord is supplying your needs. Even your healing needs. Say need. Now say it better. Say healing is a need. Hallelujah. And he healed them that had need of healing. I can't cover everything. I thought I should just stop here tonight. Because I want to give you a moment to just exercise your faith. Hallelujah. Exercise your faith right now. Exercise your faith. I want you to exercise your faith right now. Hallelujah. Rise to your feet. Somebody's faith is going on. There are four things I wanted to cover, but these two at least sets the foundation. These two sets the tone, the foundation. I want you to start by saying, I live and I do not die. The numbers of my days I fulfill the hand of the Lord is upon me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. This pain ought not to be in my body. This back pain ought not to be. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I curse you back pain. I curse you knee pain. In the name of chest pain, I curse you. Heart disease, I curse you. I choose life. I choose health. Stomach pain, I curse you. 